The objective of this video is to review the relationship between the musculoskeletal system and pelvic floor disorders, including urinary and defecatory dysfunction, as well as pelvic pain and dyspareunia. We will also demonstrate an efficient musculoskeletal examination in the female patient who presents with these complaints. Cosmopolitan recently published an article on birth injuries, which included the quote, Contrary to what one may think, OBGYNs are not trained to evaluate pelvic floor muscles or nerves, even though they work in this region. A speculum pushes right past the very muscles and nerves that cause problems as the OB tries to get to the uterus and cervix. A systematic evaluation of the musculoskeletal system, including both extrapelvic and pelvic floor assessment, is an important adjunct to the pelvic exam. These findings may identify the origin of the pelvic floor disorder and allow for optimal treatment planning. Observing the patient's gait pattern and sitting position can help identify underlying orthopedic conditions and screen for misaligned hips that may accompany tenderness or muscular dysfunction. There are structures on the outside of the pelvis that can influence what happens with the pelvic floor muscles on the inside. So a quick exam looking at the sacroiliac joints, looking to see if there's tenderness and tightness within the paraspinal muscles or tenderness at the pubic symphysis may indicate that there's an instability within the bony pelvis contributing to pelvic floor dysfunction. The pelvic floor sometimes tries to compensate for that instability, perhaps becoming overworked, fatigued, and weak, or maybe overworked, tight, and then tender. So to effectively treat the pelvic floor and the bowel bladder sexual dysfunction, we need to take a look at all of these structures. Taking a brief orthopedic history may uncover factors on the outside of the pelvis and down that kinetic chain that are contributing to pelvic floor dysfunction. So looking to see if they have an antalgic or an asymmetrical gait. Do they have total hip replacement? Maybe they've got some knee bursitis, tendonitis, and some plantar fasciitis. These issues can contribute to pelvic floor dysfunction. Evaluating the patient's back is an opportunity to note any scars from previous back surgeries that could be contributing to their muscular dysfunction. Palpation of the erector spinae muscles, which run cephalad to caudad, lateral to the spinous processes, can identify spasticity or tenderness. The sacroiliac joint is the connection between the sacrum and the iliac bones bilaterally. As these illustrations depict, the SI joints are in close proximity to numerous hip and pelvic muscles. Palpation or manipulation of these joints, as well as a pubic symphysis anteriorly, can identify hip dissymmetry or misalignment that can cause or exacerbate pelvic floor disorders. The following video clip is a real-time examination of these structures. And I'm going to take a look at your back and your hip muscles, okay? okay? So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to push on the, what's called the paraspinous muscles. Do you have any tenderness there? No. And I'm going to push on the paraspinous muscles on this side. And you don't some feel there. Like, um, a little some bit. here. A little bit. So a little bit of right-sided paraspinous muscle tenderness here. And then I'm going to push on what's called the SI joint. Is that tender for you there? A little bit. Not yeah. too bad. And then on this side? Not as much. Okay. so. There's a little bit of tenderness on the right SI and right paraspinous area. Okay. Now I'm gonna roll your thighs out and I'm gonna push on the back of the pubic bone with my hand. You tell me if this is tender for you, okay? Mm -hmm. If I push here, does that hurt? Mm -hmm. That's very tender. It's tender. Okay, and now I'm gonna push on the same bone on the opposite side, is that Not tender? Not as tender. Not as tender? Okay. Now I want you to take your knees and squeeze my arm as hard as you can, really hard. Is that hurting in here or in your in your butt cheek? No. Okay, now relax. Pelvic muscle dysfunction has been associated with a variety of clinical presentations, including urinary symptoms with or without incontinence, defecatory dysfunction, generalized pelvic pain, and dyspareunia. The pelvic floor muscles are like any muscle in our body, so they can become weak, they can get tight, we can lose coordination, poor motor control, and when that happens, like any muscle in the body, dysfunction occurs. So if the exam demonstrates that there's tenderness in the pelvic floor, maybe a trigger point or some asymmetry, an increase in tone on the right side versus the left side, or strength differences right to left, it may indicate that the pelvic floor muscle is in part contributing to the patient's bladder dysfunction, or bowel troubles, dyspareunia, or abdominal pelvic pain. While the patient is in the dorsal lithotomy position, the clinician can observe both a Valsalva maneuver and a Kegel contraction. 
If there is minimal or no movement during these exercises, it may indicate underlying shortened musculature and tenderness that will be encountered on the internal examination. A single finger digital exam can evaluate the resting tone of the pelvic floor muscles and identify tenderness in the levator ani muscle group, which are palpable at the 5 and 7 o'clock positions. The obturator internus muscles are found at the 2 and 10 o'clock positions and can also be readily evaluated by asking the patient to abduct the ipsilateral knee against resistance while palpating internally. This is also an opportunity to evaluate for tenderness of any perineal or vaginal scars. Finally, the patient's Kegel contraction strength should also be determined. Part of a complete pelvic exam includes taking a look at the patient's ability to identify and appropriately contract the pelvic floor muscle and do the Kegel. And sometimes the Kegel may appear to be weak, but it's actually because the pelvic floor muscle is short and at its end range of motion. So when you ask them to contract, they are just tightening at their end range. So our goal in rehabilitation at that situation is to teach the patient how to fully relax their pelvic floor so that they can again do a full contraction of that pelvic floor. Significant findings from this examination can lead the clinician towards a diagnosis or dysfunction amenable to conservative management. Non-surgical treatment options for urinary and defecatory dysfunction, pelvic pain, and dyspareunia include muscle relaxation techniques, pelvic floor physical therapy, biofeedback, electrical stimulation, and pharmacotherapy. The musculoskeletal assessment shown in this video adds less than two minutes to the visit and can identify dysfunction contributing to urinary, defecatory, and pain symptoms that are amenable to conservative management.